Hello everyone, this is chapter 9, part 5. In this part, we'll learn about the economies of scale, diseconomies of scale, and constant returns to scale. So, economies of scale occurs when the long run average cost curve falls as output increases. So, we have quantity here, we have costs, right, dollar sign. So, long run average cost curve looks like this. So, this is the region where our long run average cost curve is decreasing so this is the region of economies of scale okay let's talk about it larger scale firms why does this happen because as you get bigger you are able to take greater advantage of opportunities for specialization and division of labor specialization means each worker is assigned to a number of limited number of tasks for instance I am a professor of economics. I'm actually a microeconomics professor. My specialty is labor economics. And I teach certain uh, type of classes. I don't go out and teach international trade. I can teach that class, yes. But that is not my research specialization. I don't go and, uh, for instance, um, clean the classroom after I finish teaching. That's the job of the custodian. I don't enroll you guys to classes because that's the registrar's job. So everybody has a limit. So I don't take pictures, uh, my professional pictures, because we have a photographer at school. So everybody has a job that they do. Okay. Specialization means uh, everybody has a limited number of tasks. And division of labor means people are assigned to certain tasks. So how does that work? So in the book, we have a precision breaks example. It's a break shop, but I want to give you a different example. Let's say uh, you are um, the head of HEB. HEB is a grocery store um, in Texas, right? But they are the biggest number one rated grocery store in the nation in the year 2021. OK, their revenue is in billions. It's a private company. It's not public company. That means they're not in the stock market. So it's a closed private company. Huge. HEB has various um, sizes, right? They have tiny HEB pantry. I've never seen one. They have regular HEB. They have HEB plus, right? And in San Antonio, where the HEB headquarters is, are at San Antonio, Texas, I heard that there is a multiple story HEB, but normally it's just like a Walmart Supercenter one large, that's the plus one. There is a tiny pantry one, pantry, and there's regular one. Regular one, if you're in Corpus Christi, for instance, there's a regular HEB on SPID in Staples, right, on Weber. Um, there's regular HEB if you're in Austin. I'm just giving Texas City examples. There's an East uh, 7th Street HEB is a regular HEB and so on and so forth. There's plus, there's also gigantic HEB, multiple floors, right? So this is basically long run average cost curve is all about choosing the size, okay? So as you move, this is the scale of production, right? So long run average cost if you have a tiny HEB, average cost is going to be in dollars. This is the cost. Uh, very high per unit, right? So this is maybe like regular HEB, regular HEB size. This is the quantity. This is probably plus, right? And if you have five-story HEB, the costs are going to climb back again. So this is how we divide the long run average cost curve. This is the economies of scale region. This is going to be constant returns to scale region. And once the cost starts increasing, this is the diseconomies of scale. And this is going to be the minimum efficient scale, MES. We will get to that, okay? So I'm just getting ahead of myself. But I just love to give the big picture, right? All right, let's continue. Specialization and division of labor, how does it work? Maybe in an HEB pantry, you can get away by hiring two people, tiny you know, convenience stores, right? Uh, at the gas stations, you usually have only one person taking care of them, right? You can get away with that. But for instance, a regular size HEB, you're going to need people for the produce department, people for the um, uh, 
<laughs> I am blanking right now. Uh, people for the garden, home and garden department, for the meats, okay, dairy department. So you need people specialized, all right? HEB plus is going to need a lot more people. So basically, specialization and division of labor means that you assign people limited number of jobs, okay? If in a restaurant, let's say you are by yourself, you have a, a Mexican restaurant, you sell tacos, you are the cook, you cook, you clean, you take orders, you, you know, check people out, you're the cashier, you're everything. You hired one more person, that person now is in the kitchen, you are in the front of the house, okay? So this is specialization and division of labor. Probably these two people are going to pr produce more, right? The marginal product is going to go up. So that's why the long run average cost curve will decline in this region, yep. here, economies of scale. So that's how it works. You hired another person. So one person does the dishes, right? You're going to stop after a while because it's just becoming very crowded. Okay, so let's continue. Dividing production into separate tasks allows workers to specialize and become more productive. So I am very productive as an econ professor, right? I'm not going to go out and teach an accounting class. Can I teach it? Yes, I can. Um... Uh, I, I really can't based on the AACSB accreditation. You know, I should not be, but I can if I am asked to. I am able to. However, that's not my specialization, okay? So specialization and division of labor lowers unit costs. Scale economies also arise. Economies of scale also arise when quasi-fixed costs are spread over more units of output. So let's say... Uh, let's say I have uh, one, you know, let's continue with the precision brakes, precision brakes. So this is a brake shop. You have one worker, you hired one more. Now you have two workers and you had, uh, you have um, two bays. Okay. When I say bays, these are the bays that you lift your car up. I'm giving this example because I'm having trouble with my brakes actually at the moment. Anyway, so you have two bays that two people can work, right? And what happens is that you hire two more people, now you have four people, right? So these bays, when these two people were um, test driving cars, because you get in the brake shop, they grab your car, they test ride your car to see the problem. And then they put it up the brake, you know, load it up and then check it, change the brake pads, this and that, right? So... When you have four people, right, your production goes up with two bays. So the fixed cost, this fixed cost is being spread. This is called the spreading of the overhead. This fixed cost is being distributed over more output. So maybe with instead of two people, four people, two bays, now the output increased from 10 cars per day to 25 cars per day serviced okay so the fixed cost what happens is that fixed cost is fixed you divide it by 25 okay uh instead of 10 it's going to go down on an average even if you didn't hire two more people i'm just talking about this the more you produce right uh the average fixed cost is going to go down that's why the last one is the variety of technological factors can also contribute to declining of longer than average cost curve. Example, this is a really good example. For instance, let's say you have a, a t-shirt uh, printing business. This is a big business, actually. I mean, when I say big, it's, it's you know, small, big business. T-shirt printing business, you get orders for events, um, 5K runs, this and that. Okay, so a machine, so let's imagine machine A, okay, so this is small scale, this can only print 2,000 t-shirts a month. Okay, machine B is more complicated, has more, you know, bells and whistles, all right, so this can print 20,000 t-shirts. Okay, so usually the, it's the case that this machine that can paint, uh, paint, print 10 times more is not 10 times more expensive. It's the same case as my printer at home is, let's say, 100, um, let's say $200 color printer at the uh, university. 
we have a fancier printer, right? Much more bigger uh, potential. It costs probably, let's say, it can print maybe 30 times, but cost maybe 10 times more. Okay, so that's the idea. This economies of scale is it occurs when long run average cost rises as output increases. Generally, this is attributed to limitations to efficient management and organization of the firm. Okay, the cost of monitoring and controlling large scale business eventually goes up. So this is what it looks like, you know, economies of scale and this economies of scale. We look at long run average cost curve. I got quantity here. I got costs measured in dollars. Okay, so this is economies of scale. This is this economies of scale. Okay, as quantity increases here, long run average cost I keep putting R here, it doesn't matter, LAC or LRAC, but you know, let's keep consistent, LAC goes down. This economy scale, quantity keeps going up, you increase your scale, long run average cost starts going up. That's not cool, okay? So this happens because you got too big, okay? So with the HEB example, this is like, it. for instance, this is an HEB scale, HEB with I don't know, five stories. So five stories, five floors. That's what it means. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five story HEB. These are windows. My drawing is not the best. This is door. Five story HEB. And guess what? Milk is placed on the last floor. And there's only two elevators. <laughs> I think we would be really, really annoyed. <laughs> Not only consumers will be annoyed, but also manager. You need manager for every floor. It's not just one manager. Now you have to uh, you have to coordinate those managers. So you got just way too big. And this happens to companies sometimes. They get too big for their own good. Constant cost. This is constant returns to scale. Okay. With constant cost, neither economies or diseconomies of scale occurs. Firm experiences constant costs in the long run. So long run average cost curve is flat and equal to long run marginal cost curve at all output levels. So I want to show you this is what it looks like. Oops. Okay. Long run average cost quantity. This is costs. Dollars. Okay. So this is economies of scale. Minimum efficient scale is coming up just at this point. You have here about constant returns to scale and this is this economies of scale. Okay. So the special case of constant cost, here's marginal cost and average cost are equal to each other. Okay. So minimum efficient scale. Finally, we are here. It is the, uh, the minimum efficient scale of operation is the lowest level of output needed to reach the minimum value of long run average cost curve. So whenever it's the point where we exhaust the full economies of scale basically okay so here's a graph all right so long run average cost quantity here you go economies of scale this region minimum efficient scale where we reach uh, the minimum efficient scale this is the quantity constant returns to scale constant average cost this is the point where this economies of scale dis it says it's okay this, DIS, DS, I call it DS starts. Okay. So this is a different uh, various shapes of long run average cost curve and different minimum efficient scale, um, different points at which they reach minimum efficient scale. Okay. So early this economy. So this is cool. It's exhausted really fast. So this is like an industry. Costs go down really fast, then starts climbing up really, really quickly. Okay, this is extended economies. So economies of scale is longer. So this is early this economies. That means economies of scale is very low, a uh, very small amount. Then boom, it goes up. This takes time, and this is extended constant, uh, long run average cost curve. So there's a constant returns to scale, uh, region. Scale is here here and here. All right, so I'll see you in part six.